I love hi-hats. I love how every drummer has their own unique way of playing them. I love the big driving sound they helped John Bonham achieve in Led Zeppelin. I love the way a single open note can drive a groove into the next measure perfectly. All in all, hi-hats are pretty amazing. Let's talk about your left foot. No, not my left foot, but rather that often overlooked thing underneath your hi-hats that is the key not only to getting a great groove and control of your sound, but also to developing a sense of coordination and independence that will serve you on the drums for the rest of your life. The modern hi-hat is an invention from only about 100 years ago. Before they were raised up to a strikable height, early drum set contraptions included a pedal that moved a low pair of cymbals called a low boy. You couldn't play the cymbals with your hands, but boy did your toes get a workout. In fact, when the early jazz drummers played swing on the hi-hat, this was the inspiration for the invention of the ride cymbal. But I've got to stay on focus. Today is about hi-hats. Is it hi-hat or hi-hats? Because you put two of them together to make one, and maybe you have some aux hats, and then like, what do you got? Then you have hi-hats, but each one is a hi-hat made out of two hi-hat symbols or hi-hats and I'm so lost. First things first, when you're getting to know your hi-hat, you need to explore. Don't just hit the top of the symbol, but hit the bell as well. Hit the bell with the tip of your stick, hit the bell with the side of your stick. Hit the edge of the hats and then vary what part of the stick you use to hit the edge. The sounds available to you here are so vast and it really pays to spend some time discovering what every inch of your cymbals sound like. Let's talk about pressure. When I want a really articulate sound, I'll play with my heel up and press down firmly on the pedal to get the cymbals to really close together tightly. When I want to open my hi-hat just a little bit, here's my little trick for getting both great control and a great sound. Rather than staying on your toes and lifting off the pedal, try lowering your heel slowly until your entire foot is resting on the pedal board. By resting your foot, you're naturally lowering the amount of pressure holding the cymbals together, and they're going to sound nice and sizzly when you strike them like this. Now, let's pause for a moment and consider what you've done here. With just a slight change in pressure, you've completely changed the character of the entire surface of your hi-hats when you play them. All the possible combinations of areas you can hit, the sonic possibilities have just doubled. Lift off the pressure just a little bit more and you've tripled the number of sounds available to you. Now it's time to give your left foot a workout. When you use your foot to close the cymbals together, Drummers call that sound a chick. There are three main techniques that I use to produce that chick sound with my foot. The first I'll call the bounce. All you have to do is stay on the ball of your foot and bounce your knee up and down, lifting your foot and the pedal along with the movement. This is especially good for playing eighth notes on the hi-hat with your foot during a groove on the ride cymbal. What's really cool about these next two techniques is that they involve both a silent movement and an audible one. This heel-toe technique involves striking the heel of your foot on the back of your pedal board, keeping the hi-hats closed. This isn't going to be audible to anybody but yourself and your cat in the drum room with you, but you're using this silent movement and beat to keep track of the time. And then as your toes have lifted up from rocking your foot back, they can come back down onto the pedal to produce the chick. Make sure that with this technique, that silent heel strike still counts as a note in your mind and with your body. You want it to be in time and in sync with both your other limbs and with the music. The whole point is that you get to physically keep time on the parts of the beat that you want to keep silent. 
That brings us to the third technique, or the swivel. With the swivel technique, the concept is similar to the previous one in that there is a movement and strike with your foot that is a silent keeping of the time. Start by keeping the ball of your foot on the pedal in a heel up position. Now, bounce your heel up and down along with the pulse you want to feel. Begin to swivel your heel in and out a little bit. I like to come in towards my center, off of the pedal, and then back directly onto the pedal board. Once you have this going, try to hop the top of your foot up when you swivel from off to on the pedal. You'll be able to bring the cymbals back together for a very crisp chick. Because the swivel technique allows you to keep up that pressure on the ball of your foot, it produces a drier, more articulate chick. There's less risk of the cymbals ringing out after they close together. The development of the hi-hat didn't stop with its invention in the early 1900s. Everything from the hammering, lathing, bell shape, even the interaction between the weights of the two cymbals, it all plays a huge part in shaping the sound of a particular pair of hi-hats. Modern hi-hats today are typically produced with heavier bottom cymbals, giving them a more articulate sound when played closed. The top cymbal also plays an important role in shaping the sound. Hi-hats with thinner top cymbals have a lower pitched, warmer sound. Paiste introduced their sound edge hi-hats to the world in the 1970s. The wavy edged bottom cymbal allows the air to better escape when played with your foot, producing a more articulate and consistent chick sound. Your hi-hat is the most expressive instrument on your drum set. The combinations of sounds it can make is countless. On top of that, I use different hi-hats depending on the style of music and the mood that I want to create. Thinner, larger diameter cymbals give you a lower pitched and washier sound. Hi-hats with thicker bottom cymbals give you a very articulate closed sound, great for pop music and anything needing clarity in the parts that you play. And then you can get weird with it. Special hi-hats, like these PSTX hats, have holes for a trashy electronic type sound. I use these when I want a really aggressive sound or when I'm recording drums for hip hop and electronic music that need a more digital edge to the drum sound. As you can probably tell, I like hi-hats a lot. I like playing them, I like talking about them, and I love watching demos of them on YouTube. Hi-hats are at the very core of your drum set and are part of the heart and soul of modern music since the invention of jazz. So after hi-hats, what symbols, what sounds are you most excited to explore? There's just an infinite number of possibilities when you explore on the drums, and that's what gets me so excited about this instrument. Now, in case you missed it, this is an entire series that you can watch front to back. We're talking kick technique, fills, orchestration, playing fast, playing better, getting great sounds out of your drums. The whole playlist is a link in the description. I want to give a huge thanks to Pisces Symbols and Redbird Studios for helping to make these videos possible, and I will see you guys very soon.